We're going to be starting on page three in the chemistry of life notes. We had just finished talking about the different kinds of bonds that can help to form molecules. So in theory, you kind of know the answer to this question already based on what we had discussed last time. The bond that holds the hydrogen atoms to the oxygen atom within a water molecule are covalent bonds because they're sharing a pair of electrons. Specifically, it's a polar covalent bond because the oxygen has higher electronegativity, so it hangs out with the electrons more often to create that dipole moment that we had talked about previously. So polar covalent bond. Uh, the next two terms that you guys have to define, they're actually really easy if you know the roots that make them up. So hydro means water and philic means to like or to love. So hydrophilic substances like water or will dissolve in water. That includes stuff like sugars, carbohydrates. Um, it includes stuff like ions, salts, like sodium chloride. A lot of proteins are going to be hydrophilic. There's a bunch of stuff out there that will dissolve in water. Hydrophobic substances hate water or have a fear of water, and that means they're not going to dissolve in water, and that would include any of your fats, oils, steroids, things like that. Why is water important for life? Well, it's because of those polar covalent bonds that we've been talking about. Because of the polar bonds, water molecules can hydrogen bond with each other, and that gives water a bunch of special properties that are very useful for us. One, it can help to stabilize temperature. There's two special properties of water that kind of go in here. It has what's known as a high heat of vaporization. That means when water evaporates, it takes a bunch of heat with it. We sweat to cool off, and that's why. Second, water has a high heat capacity. That means water has the ability to absorb a lot of heat without changing temperature itself. That's useful for us because there are some places on the planet Earth that get to be over 130 degrees, and yet if we walk outside, we don't spontaneously become 130 degrees. It would take us a while to change temperature in that external environment. Next, water is an excellent solvent. Back in high school, I was told water is a universal solvent, and hopefully you guys heard that too. What it means is that water can dissolve anything that is polar, again, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and anything that's ionic, like salts or acids or bases. Water is both cohesive and adhesive. What that means is water can stick to itself really well, and water can stick to other things really well. The cohesive property of water also gives water a high surface tension, which is important for life in a number of different ways. Uh, the one that I'm going to talk to you guys about here is one of the horror shows that is the planet Earth. Um, red imported fire ants, they are an invasive species in the United States. They're originally from South America. They don't have any good predators here, and so they have taken over large swaths of the United States, displacing our native ant species, in fact. One of the things that imported fire ants can do is form these rafts using the surface tension of water. So there was just yet another hurricane in the United States that hit pretty hard, Hurricane Laura. One of the things that the cleanup crew has to deal with is that as the flood surge comes in and then starts to dissipate over time, not only are there huge amounts of water from the flooding that existed, but there's also huge amounts of contaminants within that water. And then on the surface of the water, there's rafts of fire ants just floating around so that if you so much as touch the water near them, they will swarm you and make you wish that you were dead. So yeah, the earth is mad at us and fire ants is one of the ways that it is, I suppose. So surface tension, I mentioned that just a second ago. Water has a crazy high surface tension. Probably at some point you've heard that if you were to fall out of an airplane, it's just as bad to land in a body of water as it is to land on concrete. That's because water has a crazy high surface tension. P.S. Side note, it's not really just as bad, but landing on water from that height will definitely break bones and you can totally die from hitting it, but it's not as bad as concrete. Um, the surface tension of water, in terms of why that's important for you guys, your lungs are not directly attached to your chest wall. What holds your lungs against your chest wall is the surface tension of a fluid called pleural fluid that's inside between the, the lungs and then the rib cage. If it weren't for the surface tension of that fluid, your lungs would collapse after every breath that you breathed out. And so surface tension is critically important for you. It's just that people don't think about that on a day-to-day -day basis. Next, what is pH? It is essentially a measure of how acidic or basic a solution happens to be. Probably in high school you played with some litmus paper that told you what was an acid and what was a base. 
you may have, um, if you went to a fancy school, you may have had pH meters where you could stick in a probe and then it would tell you the exact number that was the measure of the pH of that solution. Uh, here in our labs, well at the Hill College campus, we use anthocyanin, that cabbage juice, as a pH indicator. Um, for the Tarrant County students, we don't do a pH lab, but pH can tell you how acidic or basic something happens to be. It is a measure of the number of hydrogen ions within a solution, but that doesn't mean anything to most people, so just go with the acid-base part of it. Another side note that's relevant here, basic and alkaline mean the same thing, and I do use both words interchangeably. They do mean the same thing, so get used to that word alkaline as well. Um, after that, I tell you to label a pH scale that I've given you in your notes, and I told you to color the acidic side red. Okay, so first off, for your numbers, for biological purposes, the pH scale is going to go from 0 to 14. So label your scale 0 to 14. For color the acidic side red, everything that has a pH less than 7 is acidic, so color everything less than 7 red. Color the basic side or alkaline side blue. Everything that is greater than 7 is blue, so you're going to color from just a little bit higher than 7 all the way up to 14 blue for basic. Then I said we're going to add a few chemicals to the scale in this class. And I gotta, I gotta find the right page. Oh no, please don't tell me I don't have that page. There we go. Oh. No, I actually don't have a list of things that I wanted you to do. I thought I did. Okay, so here's what we're going to go ahead and add to that. We're going to add stomach acid. It's usually right around a pH of 2. So on your scale, right near the 2, go ahead and put stomach acid. Um, for people who vomit a lot, whether it's for morning sickness, or anorexia, or maybe they're on chemotherapy and it's making them nauseous all the time, that stomach acid is actually very acidic and it does damage not only to the esophagus, but also to the teeth within the oral cavity and it can make the teeth more likely to fall out. So stomach acid is a very strong acid. Um, go ahead and get, we'll say Coke, but you can do soda, beer, vinegar, whatever. Those guys usually have a pH right around five. And so put Coke at five. Once again, that's an acid. It's not a super strong acid, but it is acidic enough that it can still damage your teeth if you keep it in your mouth for a length of time. Um, next up, we'll go ahead and do right at seven, pure water. At about 7.4, you have human blood. And let's see, from there, we'll go ahead and skip. I'm trying to think of what I want you guys to do off over there. We'll go ahead and do bicarbonate of soda, which nobody ever calls it that. It's baking soda. Baking soda has a pH right around 12. And so around 12, put baking soda. It's a fairly strong base. Um, oven cleaner and sodium hydroxide have a pH right around 14. Sodium hydroxide is also known as lye, um, caustic, caustic lye, caustic soda. It has multiple names depending on who's manufacturing it, but sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. Now, usually students know that acids can cause chemical burns, and if you get it on you, it will hurt. A lot of people don't realize, though, that bases can be just as damaging to the human body. If you get lye on you, it can cause chemical burns just like a strong acid can. So basically, your body, it's not neutral. There are certain places in your body that are neutral, but your body varies in different places. So notice that your blood is slightly basic. Not super duper basic. Again, it's around 7.4, but your blood is slightly basic. Your urine, on the other hand, is usually somewhere around 6, so your urine is slightly acidic. And then inside your stomach, super acidic with that pH somewhere around 2. So in different places, you have different pHs. Um, now, your body can handle this acidity within the stomach because your stomach has several modifications that help it deal with that acid but other areas of your body could not handle that level of acidity. I already talked about your esophagus can be damaged from that hydrochloric acid. I want to say I have a